When we're carrying out a periodic test, such as an EICR, do we need to disconnect protective conductors to successfully complete these tests? So we're talking about continuity of protective conductors, protective bonding conductors, supplementary bonding conductors, earth electrodes. And in this video, I'm going to have a look at testing ZE and see if we need to disconnect protective conductors because if the test is carried out incorrectly, you'll get false results. Let's have a look. So please bear in mind that we're talking about periodic inspection here and not initial verification. That's very different. So if we're doing an EICR, a periodic inspection, we have to consider regulation 651.2, which tells us that periodic inspection should be carried out without dismantling or with partial dismantling as required, and it's supplemented by appropriate tests and measurements. Installations can become vast and complex. If you start disconnecting large parts of it, you might start reintroducing faults, not put things back together correctly. A large part of the ICRs is the actual visual inspection, but obviously we've got to do some meter tests as well. So we need to have measurements for ZE and ZS and such to make sure that our protected devices will operate and to make sure that we've got continuity. So we do have to do some partial disconnection. And the reason for that is when you've got things common together, when they're all connected together, a fault of one part could be introduced onto the whole installation, such as an insulation resistance problem. But we do have to sometimes disconnect our protected conductors because we get parallel paths. Electrical installations are very intertwined, interconnected. I've got a relatively modest installation here. There's eight circuits. Then we have our main protective bonding and our earthing conductor. And as you can see from the MET, all the protective conductors have been disconnected. But let's have a look at what's still connected together. So everything you see here in purple has some continuity. There's some connection together. A lot of it is caused by the copper plumbing, our gas and our water. Our bonding's disconnected here, but we've still got connectivity through the boiler manifold. Copper pipes going to all the taps. We've got gas going to the cooker. We've got hot water going to immersions and towel rails. And these will also have an electrical connection. And so you can see how many parallel paths you will have. This spider's web of parallel paths. And it would be unwise and unsafe to try and disconnect everything. We've disconnected everything from the MET, but we've still got connectivity through the copper pipe work. So a complete isolation of circuits can be difficult, if not impossible. Here's a further example of the interconnectivity. Our exposed conducted parts. These will be parts of the electrical installation, our sockets, our switches, things like cookers, boilers, consumer units. They're connected to the MET with circuit protective conductors. Our extraneous conductive parts, such as our gas and water, copper pipe work, could be structural steel, any external conductive piece of metal entering the building could be an extraneous conductive part. And they're connected to the MET with main protective bonding conductors. And our exposed and our extraneous conductive parts, they're connected together with supplementary bonding conductors. I go into this in other videos, but remember that circuit protected conductors they are to facilitate fast disconnection times, and our protected bonding conductors they are to limit the touch voltage that can appear within an installation. So, since we're talking about do we disconnect protective conductors, let's just have it clear what a protective conductor is. Definitions in BS7671 tells us. That a protective conductor is a conductor used for some measure of protection against electric shock and intended for connection to any of the following parts. Exposed conductive parts, extraneous conductive parts, the main earthing terminal, earth electrodes, or the earth point of the source or an artificial neutral. Let's look where these conductors are installed. Now, if you have an electrical installation with one supply, you only have one main earthing terminal and you have one earthing conductor. The earthing conductor connects to the means of earthing. That's how we connect the general mass of earth to the MET. And this can be an earthing facility provided by the distributor, TNS or TNCS, or it could be an earth electrode where we actually provide the earth 
conduct to ourselves. We connect to a rod in the ground. Or it could be the earthing of the source, such as a power transformer. So there's various different ways the means of earthing enters the property. It could be off the supply cable's metal sheath, which is usual for a TNS. It could be a TNCS taken off the protective earth neutral conductor. Or it could be off a rod that goes into the main earthing terminal. Our protective bonding conductors, they connect to the MET. The domestic, that's usually a 10 millimeter squared green and yellow conductors. And our circuit protective conductors go to our exposed conductive parts. Important to stress, if we're talking about disconnecting protective conductors, we have to isolate the installation because we're losing our primary protective measure. Isolate and lock off if you're disconnecting any protective conductor. As you can see in this diagram, the MET is external to the consumer unit. There will be an earth bar in the consumer unit but in this case, it's known as an earth marshalling bar. That's where all our CPCs and our bonding conductors will go to. And possibly our earthing conductor as well, depending how it's set up. The main earthing terminal could be in the consumer unit, but quite often you find them external, just near the cutout. Now this is important when you're testing your ZE, and we'll look into why. So when we're testing the external loop impedance, our ZE, the earthing conductor is disconnected because we only want to test the external impedance between the earthing conductor and the supply line. So all additional paths must be removed. This is often carried out at the distribution board as shown here, but that could result in an incorrect measurement. The earthing conductor is connected to the MET by the cutout. What we've disconnected is a connection from the MET to the earth marshalling bar in the consumer unit. And as you can see, we've still got a connection from the MET via main protective bonding conductors to extraneous conductive parts. These could be gas, water, steel and such. They can act like earth electrodes and give you a return path to earth. You'd likely pick it up by having a high impedance, but you still have this fault path. Because services are connected in neighbouring properties, you could actually be using their earth return path as well. So your reading might be quite low. It's quite easy to see by this diagram that we're not testing from the earthing conductor. We haven't isolated the parallel paths. We've connected our meter to a CPC, not the earthing conductor. And that reading might appear satisfactory. But as you can see, the earthing conductor might be ineffective, it might be missing, or it might be broken. We haven't got a true earth fault loop impedance reading. We're getting a reading through copper services, and these might be changed at any time. Plastic inserts might be put in, and you will lose this connection to earth as well. So it is really important that we're making sure that we are testing via the earthing conductor, the maximum readings for TNCS are 0.35, TNS 0.8 ohms. You often get a lot lower than that. And as mentioned, if you're going through the mass of Earth, you'll probably get high readings, which will give you some indication all's not correct. But as also mentioned, you might be picking up the neighbour's Earth, getting a reading through that. And we have a reg, 542.2.6, that tells us that metallic pipes for gas and flammable liquids are not to be used as an earth electrode. And that's the same with uh, the metallic pipe of water utilities. So how do we test it then? I'll put two methods here. One where we're still disconnecting at the consumer unit. But you'll notice we've disconnected the protective bonding. And we're using the CPC from the MET to the earth marshalling bar. So you can see we've got a direct connection. So we're testing via the CPC and the earthing conductor. And we've disconnected the main protective bonding. And we test between the incoming live and that CPC. We get our earth fault loop impedance. So we've disconnected from the marshalling bar. We've disconnected the bonding. So we've disconnected as many parallel paths as we can. We're just reading through the earthing conductor in that short length of CPC. You do have to be careful though here, especially in flats. There might be more than one protective bonding conductor to each flat. Make sure you know what you're disconnecting. You don't want to leave another flat without its protective bonding. 
And of course, the installation has to be isolated. It's a live test. We're testing on the supply side of the main switch. And remember, as soon as the test is finished, to reconnect all the protective conductors. The other method, which is my preferred method, we don't disconnect anything in the distribution board and the bonding conductors are still connected. We actually disconnect the means of earthing, the earthing conductor, at the MET when it comes into the property and we test between that and the supply side of the main switch. Just want to point out though that we're disconnecting the earthing conductor from the MET. We're not interfering with the supply cutout. If you've got a clamp onto the sheath, don't touch that. Because that's a vulnerable point. A clamp onto a sheath is not a good way to do it because it compresses the cable. So we don't interfere with the DNO's earth connection. We can disconnect the earthing conductor from our MET. Don't disconnect anything from their equipment, from their clamp, or from the combined earth and neutral bar within the service head. Don't disconnect from there. Just a screw connection to the MET to get our earth fault loop impedance measurement. That can sometimes be impractical because there might be some distance apart. With this method, we don't have to do any other disconnections. So it's a very straightforward test, really. You've just got to remove the parallel paths. And the easiest way to do that is at the earthing conductor. So anyway, that's just a quick one on testing ZE. And you do disconnect the earthing conductor. You're doing two things. You're proving that you've actually got a means of earthing. And you're also getting the earth fault loop impedance. But we can also use it to help validate our ZS readings. So anyway, thanks for watching. Keep safe. I'm putting a bit of stuff on Instagram now. It might be quite handy if you just want to have a quick flick through. I'm JPE7671. Okay, thanks now.